So tonight I'm going to talk about part of a set as well as equivalent fractions. And I'm going to talk about generating equivalent fractions, not necessarily simplifying equivalent fractions. Because when you simplify or aka reduce a fraction, that's what, that's an equivalent fraction as well. But it's through two different concepts. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm working with my iPad, so I'm going to be looking down, like I said, it's a new set. So on this is my T-chart, and if you're wondering what I'm working in, this is Explain Everything. I use it for my virtual lessons and all of that. And it costs about three bucks a month. It's really great. I love it. It's something that I use all the time. I'm trying to adjust these sleeves on this sweater they're really uncomfortable so we're going to talk about part to whole let me so we have part to whole and then we have part of a set Hmm. Let me bring that down. All right, so part to whole and part of a set. Now, when we're talking about part to whole, we're talking about use different colors. So say, for instance, we have one, two, and then three four five so we could say that two-fifths of the tiles are yellow now that's part of a whole because it's part of the whole thing and why did i use green i don't know so let me go over it with black i know to use black the next time all right so then we have part of a set so let me go over here i'm gonna use yellow And we have, we could say that three six of the tiles are yellow. But we can also say that one half of the tiles are yellow. That's part of a set because we could say that this is one group or, and we can say that that's one group. So one out of the two groups are yellow. So that's what part of a set and part of a whole. But here's the problem with students. Let me add up. With students, they don't understand that one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, this can change. And that's why in high school, they like to deal with, with whole, I mean, with decimals. Decimals have a definite total, a definite denominator, whereas fractions, it changes because the whole can be anything. It can be thirds, it can be fourths. So this little thing that 
was introduced called unit fraction is something that you should definitely teach your students because it goes from whole numbers to one fifth, two fifths, three fifths, four fifths, and five fifths or one whole. If you teach the students that, it will help them with their foundation, period. That will help them get through a lot of things because I had to prompt my students to say, well, what are you using? Are you using, what unit fraction are we using? And a lot of them didn't understand the unit fraction. The unit fraction could change. Say for instance, I erase this. So my whole turns into something else. So one fourth, the unit fraction is one fourth, two fourths, three fourths, four fourths, or one whole. So if your students understand unit fractions, unit fractions will save them because it makes them go back and say, what are we dealing with? We're dealing with fours. And then it can be extended to factors and multiples. So that this is the first thing that you should teach your students, the unit fraction. Because when we get to equivalent fractions, the students have to understand how the units and the denominators, what relationship they have. So when I introduce equivalent fractions, I know that some of your curriculums ask you to use the area model. Please do not start with the area model, especially if you have kids that struggle. You are going to be frustrated and your students are going to be frustrated. Do not use that. So when I teach you, teach fractions. I start with the unit fraction and I use different models. I don't use the same models. I don't because you need to get the kids used to being fluid with these different models. So the first model that I use is that good old circle, fraction circle. That's my dog barking. So with my fraction circles, I teach them to put a dot. And you can always connect this back to a unit fraction. So you can ask the kids, what unit are we working with? The unit is just one part of the whole. So they should understand that the unit fraction is thirds and the unit fraction over here is so one third, one third, one third. And over here, one six, one six, one six, one six. Now, the issue with this is that the children cannot see that two sixes are the same as one third, but you can teach them that on this fraction wheel. You can ask them what do you do? And some of your kids are not going to get because they're going to struggle with, with the multiplication. I'm telling you right now. So a strategy that you can put in place is your T chart. So we have, let's start with one. One time, one group of three is three. Two groups of three is six. Okay. So you ask them, what do we do? And some of them are going to say, oh, we add it. No, ma'am. 
So what, do, what we do to the numerator, we have to do to the denominator. So we can add, if we partition this by two, we can't just partition or add plus two. And that, that leads to a whole nother issue. So if I'm trying to figure out how one third and two sixths are equivalent, they have to understand that one third and two sixths, they call this a scale factor. And you can use this with fourth grade and up. I wouldn't recommend for, I mean, because that thing is over. I wouldn't recommend it for third graders. So what do you have to do? It's not adding because at the, and this goes back to multiple, reinforcing that multiplication concept. So what do I have to do to the numerator and the denominator to get two, two six? Make that two. So they're going to say, oh, one times three is three. One, two times three. I multiplied it by two. And if you look here, each each two six is partitioned by two. So if we did that to each one third, it would become two six. Now here's the, the thing with equivalent fractions. The idea is that two thirds, oops, one third is equivalent to two six. But here's the problem. They think that it gets bigger. But if we go back here, we know that any, when we're generating equivalent fractions through multiplication, it is getting smaller. So that's what's happening here. So you have to remind the students and that builds that understanding that a third is larger than a six. But you can't do that if you are doing this because that makes no sense. That's why I'm not a proponent of that butterfly me method. And I don't recommend that you use it because what happens is the students don't understand that a third is larger than a six. If I go here and I'm teaching, this should be your first model. If I'm teaching with a fraction wheel and then or and beginning with that unit fraction and then moving on to the fraction wheel applying that unit fraction to this fraction wheel it will help the students to understand why this is true but that cross multiplication butterfly method it's not going to help you.